So hello and welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to see the best and the official way to link your Firebase project with your Angular application. And we know there are a lot of ways to do that, but today we are going to see, as I said, the best, the easiest, and really the recommended way by both Firebase as well as Angular. Now, obviously there are some prerequisites for this video. For example, you must know what an Angular application is, at least the basics, right? You must also have a Firebase project or a Firebase account set up already. And if you don't know how to do that, we have a playlist in which we teach you Angular and Firebase from scratch. We build a project from scratch live on this YouTube channel. So if you want to learn that, I would recommend you to check the description below for the playlist or the pinned comment of this video. But Assuming that you know a little bit about both, let's start Angular Fire tutorial. First of all, we need to run this command which will add the Angular Fire project for us. But before we actually do that, there are a lot of things that this documentation does not tell you, which I will tell you so that you don't have to waste time like I did when I was implementing this for the first time. Also, we have this Angular application in which Again, this we built together on YouTube, but on this application, we are basically fetching cryptocurrencies with a real API, and uh, I'll teach you to how, how to do all of that. We have a login form, sign up form, and this application is not just front end. We even connected it with a Firebase database where we have official authentication logic set up. We have a database in which we can store things and a lot of other things that we have learned before. So um, if you, again, if you're interested, check that out. But what I really wanted to say was that this is our real application. And if I go to my project settings, you see Firebase already tells me what configuration I really need in order to connect any application with Firebase database or Firebase, any feature that Firebase provides, right? So it's not like it's super complicated. It's already given to us. But what's the best way to implement it in an Angular application? That is what I'm going to cover today. And I hope you will learn something in this video. So first of all, let me go to my Angular CLI and let me stop this application from running because I don't really need it anymore. Now the first command that you all need to run is Firebase login or Firebase login reauth. If you haven't connected your CLI or your computer with a Firebase account with the help of terminal, I recommend you to do that right now because with the help of this, Firebase will be able to find your applications after you have successfully logged in. And even if you have logged in before, like let's say you logged in 10 days ago, just do a Firebase login dash dash reauth. So what this would do is this would at least make sure that the connection is live with Firebase and your Angular application when it comes to the CLI. So I'll add this uh, as a chat and I'll also show it to you on the screen. So this is what you need to run first. So I'm going to do that and you will see something similar happen on your side if you are doing it parallel with me. So first of all, it's saying, do I allow it to collect some reports? I'm fine with that. Then let me show you what it opened on my Google Chrome. There you go. It's asking me which account do I want to use for Firebase? I choose my account. Similarly, you can choose yours. Once that is done, I allow again. And finally, it says Firebase CLI login was successful. And there you go. Once that is done, we will now be able to connect our application seamlessly. So again, I'm, I'm not teaching you one of the ways, I'm teaching you the best way, right? The easiest way. So now that we have done it saying, waiting for authentication and finally it says success, that is good. Now we can move on to the next important thing we need to add, which is npm install minus D Firebase tools. Again, not mention the docs and it can be very painful and it can waste a lot of time if you don't do this. So let's run that as well. I'll add that on the screen as well so that you can have a look at it. It should take five to 10 seconds to uh, install this library. Once that is done, we will go to the final step, which will help us download or link, I should say, Firebase with our Angular application. So both those commands were run successfully. Let's go to the final one for today, which is going to be ng add Angular Fire. Let's run this. It will ask us a series of questions. So we will not only link uh, our application with, uh, uh, with Firebase today, we will also make sure that once the link is complete, we are able to get something from the database, from real-time database, right? So it will also verify that our link is correct. So now it's installing some packages. Let's see. Once it installs, I know it will ask me what kind of application I want to choose. 
and uh, because I have multiple projects on my Firebase account, and you might have something similar on your side. So it just it will the output will differ based on how many projects you have. But eventually, I think you're going to get it once I install and link it with myself. So let's wait for it. I think it will take five or ten more seconds, and there you go. Now it is asking us what features of Firebase do you want to set up? Do you just want the hosting, just want the authentication, Firestore, real-time database, just the analytics? Now, you can select one or two if you're only interested in that. I'm going to select all of them. Let's move forward. Let's see what it asks us next. Again, it's asking me what account would I like to use. So I would like to use my primary account. And here, now it's asking me, you have multiple projects. So which project you really want to link? Now I have the Angular Crypto project that I wanted to link. So I'll go there, select that, and my site, my application, all these things can be configured on Firebase. We have done it before, so I'm not covering that again because just to avoid redundancy. Now it has changed nine files in my projects. So it just didn't install it. It really configured my whole application, which is just awesome. Let me just show you quickly what changes it made. It created a Firebase uh, RC file in which it added the details of my project itself. Then it uh, added in Angular JSON file, it added Firebase details in the end. So in case I want to deploy it, how to deploy, etc., it added those details. It created a JSON file in which it added all the information it needs eventually to run my project. And the best part is it even updated my environment files with all the information that we saw over here. So if I go back to my project overview, project settings, it added all this relevant information that I needed to run my project over here. So I don't really need to type a single line of code to link Angular and Firebase together. That's the beauty of, beauty of it, right? Even it also, not just the configuration, it also changed my Angular app module and installed all the basic modules of Firebase that I needed to run the application. It even imported them in the end over here. So there you go. Our link is officially complete. In less than two or three minutes, we are able to link Angular and Firebase, which is pretty awesome without a single piece of code writing ourselves. Now let's run our application and see if it works. So I'll hit ng serve. And once the application is done, what I want to do is, if I go to my real-time database, you see I have a list of some users, right? You might have something else, some something else on your site, but what I want to do is I want to fetch the list of all these users and just print it out on console. Because obviously once I have fetched it, then I can do anything I want to do with it, right? So I will not go into the UI in this video. I will just fetch it, print it out on the console and call it a day, therefore confirming that my application has really been linked. So all these email IDs, all these uh, name of the users, et cetera, should be visible on my application. Let's see if it works. So it compiled successfully. Let me refresh. Let me go to the main page. There you go. Everything seems to be working, but obviously there's no change to the application itself because we didn't really add anything, right? We just added the configuration at the moment. So let's go back and add or just try to fetch something from the real-time database. So for that, and we will go into the details in the future videos. If you really want to learn everything there is about Angular and Firebase, we will cover that later. But today, the video is just about connection, right? So we'll just focus on that. Now I'll just open any service that my application has. Uh, maybe I can open coin of the day service. Over here, I'll just add, so we are already fetching uh, coin of the day. So that's fine, we'll keep it as is. Let me just go to the uh, maybe the constructor itself, right? Maybe in the constructor, I can add the import. So I'll say, or instead of doing it in a service, I think I should do it in a component. So let me go to the coin of the day component. Yeah, this is a better place because service is automatically called without even me thinking about it. So I want to add it explicitly in a component one of the day component and it is available on the home page. So let's complete the import so that the errors can go away. So, and I want database. 
Our database is something that Angular adds. So as you can see, Angular Fire database, this first line. So let's see if this compiles. It does compile. So what does that mean? It means we have successfully installed all the libraries regarding Firebase. However, it still doesn't mean we have all the output we wanted, right? Because we have to make sure that the link is connected. The link is uh, established between our application and Firebase. So let's do that next. Now on ng on init, what I'll do is um, just fetch the database uh, users from the database, right? So for that, I'll just create a database reference. So I'll call it database ref and I'll use uh, the ref library from Firebase again. Um, this one and over here, I just need to pass the database that I just imported above and then what table I want information from. So I want information from the users table, right? So that's it. After this, what I can do is I can just say when we have the value ready, So when the value is ready, so there's a callback and we need to pass database ref and it will give us a snapshot of that value. Let me just print it out on the console, as I said. And I'll say snapshot dot value. And that's it. And this is a function, so I'll call that. Now again, these things that we, I'm typing right now, if you really want to learn more, let me know in the comments below and we can create dedicated tutorial for that. But as I said, today we are just all about connection, connecting with the database. And there you go, we have the user list already. And it's so awesome, right? I really love this. It was so easy. Let me refresh and show it to you again. So as soon as I refresh, it makes a call to the Firebase database, as you can see and it brings all the and it brings all the users in my database over here and i can see them right these are really uh, users that were present inside my real time database and let me just show you one more feature before calling it a day right so you might be thinking that it is static right i have fetched the list and it's all good i'm able to establish the connection which is awesome writing almost zero lines of code or maybe less than five lines of code connection established we're able to fetch the users but what if someone went to the database and changed something in the database let's see if that works so instead of saying pranav at v.com i'll say pranav at bhadia.com i'll update the database and let's see what happens here there you go it already fetched again without even refreshing it said pranav.bhadia at uh, at Bhadia.com. So what is happening behind the scenes is that once we have established established the connection, if we change anything in the database itself, it will reinform our application and refetch the fresh value. Therefore, always keeping our data uh, in the perfect and the most recent and the most refreshed manner. Right? We don't really need to do anything ourselves. That's the beauty of this. Let me show that to you once again. So now if, if I'll say run of 11, hit enter, there you go, it fetched again, and the first user is front of 11. So it's really awesome, in less than five lines of code, we were able to connect Firebase with Angular, and I'm really happy, and I hope it will help you as well in order to connect your applications, and I hope you learned something new. And if you did, let us know in the comments down below. If you have any issues, any troubles doing this connection, also let us know in the comments down below, and hit the subscribe button while you're at it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.